Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is a gift to have you all with us today on this beautiful morning on a long Memorial Day weekend. Happy Trinity Sunday. You'll be hearing all about that through, through our liturgy and as we go this morning. It's the last of sort of our feast days um, on this kind of busy liturgical uh, journey we've been on. If you are visiting, you are most welcome with us. We'll begin in just a few moments. I invite you to turn to Pam Holy, Holy, Holy 362 and stand as you are able. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, 
all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Is from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, You are a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what, uh, what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Well, like I said at the beginning of service, Happy Trinity Sunday. It is a joy to be here with all of you and on this beautiful weekend where we get to have a little bit of rest. But I have to tell you the sort of inside scoop amongst clergy on Trinity Sunday is that if you are at a church large enough to have a curate, which is a priest that's just been ordained, kind of newly interning a bit at a church, or if you have an assistant priest or a deacon or another member of the clergy retired in your congregation, you say, why don't you preach Trinity Sunday? <laughs> and that is because it is so hard to preach. So uh, across the country, no rector is preaching Trinity Sunday unless they have to. So here we are. <laughs> um, no, 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 really, it is... Um, You've had experience. I, well, so, so here we are. I've been that curate before, so I, I, I got my experience having to preach Trinity Sunday. Um, but no, truly, I say all this, and, and it is it, there's humor to it, of course, but in theology, there's so many things that we can understand by the world around us, by our experience, by our relationship with God and others, by looking at nature, and just as Jesus taught all through the New Testament, you learn a lot of theology, and I don't even think we realize it till you pay attention to it through metaphor and analogy. So much of how we understand the Bible is through metaphor. Take Trinity. It has been attempted to come up with a metaphor to understand the Trinity for ever and ever and ever. So much so that when I was in seminary, I had a professor, and he was known as that professor. You know, we've all had the hard class, the one you're dreading, the one that's going to be hard. And in this case, I had this professor for systematic theology one, two, and three. So uh, there, there was a lot of sort of dreading going into this. And systematic theology, depending on how you're wired, is typically going to be your hardest classes. And 
in seminary, and, and it's a lot in, you nitpick, and you look at all these doctrines, and you unpack them, and sometimes when you do that, you can feel these crises of faith, because you start to see inconsistency, and then you're trying to put it all back together. It's incredibly hard, very kind of philosophical type of work. So, this professor cut all of us, you know, younger seminarians a deal. He said, if you can come up with a metaphor or analogy for the Trinity, no more papers, no more tests, you don't even have to attend my class, you have an A. If you can come up with a perfect analogy to explain the Trinity. So me and some of my buddies thought, oh, thank God. It's our, it's our window. We can do this. How hard can this be? So, you know, I remember us going out to dinner and spending a while trying to come up with, how hard could it be to come up with an analogy? Three in one, one in three, holy God, Trinity. Well, it turns out it is not easy to do, and realize it would have been far more efficient to just write the papers and go to class <laughs> and the um, So... Needless to say, there's been different attempts over time. Um, some people have talked about water, three parts of water, but all water. Some people, you know, St. Patrick in the legend with the three-leaf clover talking about the Trinity, three parts, one clover, or um, an egg has been used, sort of a shell, and you have the yolk, and then you have the, the white part around it. Um, but all of these work on a very sort of high level, but when you really jump into it, you can, you know, for sort of scholars, we'll start to unpack them most of them having to do with either you're over making it one, or it's two separate, it's not oneness enough, or one part's first, one part's last, or one part's more important and one part's less important. To find something that hits all of those is, is almost impossible, and, and I think the closest to it I'll talk about towards the end, and, and it is still um, not incredibly oh, direct, a little bit obscure, but I think a helpful way to think about the Trinity. So here we are on Trinity Sunday, the opportunity to unpack this and sit with this. And, and um, I want to name, I started off, I know we had some humor and some laughing, which I wanted and is important, but I want to name it's not for disrespect for an unbelievably significant day in the church, Trinity Sunday, packed with these amazing, profound readings. <coughs> the reason for humor is because it's pointed at us, right? Because when you start to unpack this in the doctrine of the Trinity, and the root core of our faith that is the center of the universe and who we are, you kind of have to laugh because it points to the greatness of God and how much we really don't understand. And there's a bit of humor in that, but there's also a profound sort of importance to be able to sit with that. The other thing that I think is, is a beautiful gift from Trinity Sunday and, and it's not really a Sunday, or at least I don't think it should be about unpacking doctrine. It's a Sunday where we have the opportunity to sit with mystery, to sit with just what brought us that little ounce of humor, is to realize there are so many things that we don't know and understand, and our God is so great, and it is easy to lose that sometimes. And if there's anything Trinity Sunday can do for us or for your preacher, is to be able to realize I cannot perfectly explain the doctrine of the Trinity to you. But what I can do is sit with some level of mystery. So, in prepping for the sermon today, I thought, well, you know what? And, and I'm turning this into just a bit of a teaching moment. You know, those Christ school teacher roots take a while to work themselves out. But um, what I would do with the boys occasionally in other churches I've worked at is we have this gift of the Book of Common Prayer in a general sense, but um, the specific kind of gift I'm referencing is at the back is this thing called the Catechism, which is also known as an outline of faith. Now, those of you who were confirmed a long time ago in the church, you might have had to memorize parts of this, if not all of it. We don't quite do that to this level now, but it's a helpful guide that if you have theological questions or ponderings, you can turn right to this outline of faith it's intentionally high level, not to get in the nuance of theology, but just a snippet of what does it mean to be an Episcopalian following the Christian way of Jesus. So, go ahead and turn. I thought, well, this will help. Trinity Sunday, hard to unpack. Three God, one God, how do we do this? Turn to page 352, specifically. And I thought, this will help guide me. And I'm going to just tell you in advance, the Book of Common Prayer Catechism writers did the same trick as making the Hear It Preach Trinity Sunday, because this is what we got. In the middle of the page, 852. What did I say, 352? It's because that's the Eucharist, 300, right? That's, that's where I am all the time. I'm sorry. 852. Towards the middle, this is what we got. 
what is the Trinity? And here's our, and again, I'm inserting a little humor, but it's about us, not about God or the Trinity. What is the Trinity? The Trinity is one God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Catechism, for unpacking the depths of theology to help me preach today. Because there's pages, and I bring this up purposely to show you, just so you maybe didn't know this existed. There's beautiful pages that do a wonderful job giving a high picture of our faith, perhaps unless you're trying to really look and research the Trinity, in which case we sort of have our one line, what is the Trinity? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But I say all this again. Because I think it points us towards, it's not just me, it's not just us, it's this mystery. And there's something good and holy about being able to sit with what we don't know. Because what does mystery do? It points us to faith. It forces us, for lack of a better word, to be able to sit with faith. And that's what stretches us, that's what we grow, that's part of being a follower of Jesus, is feeling this profound faith and living into it. And I think mystery is one of the most direct ways to help us grow. And, and I think our Western mindset, we like to know the answers. We like to know the specifics. We love systematic theology, one, two, and three. But as you sit through all of those, what you start to realize is we have to, to, to sit with faith and mystery. Because if we can't do that, it is really hard to do what we are doing here. So Nicodemus, our gospel reading today. It's actually the same gospel reading we had back in uh, Lent, if it sounded familiar to you. And it's a beautiful choice for today. And originally, why I do think it was chosen for Trinity Sunday is because if you were reading it through the lens of Trinity, you saw there's references to the Spirit and the work of the Spirit and the Spirit from above being born and this conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. Then there's reference, of course, to not only Jesus being the one in the conversation, but the role of Jesus and the role of the Son, and then all of it, the working of God, the Father, and Heaven. So you sort of see all three parts of the Trinity in there. But I think the secondary, perhaps, purpose, or at least what I'm taking from this, that I think is really profound, is it again has to do with wrestling with mystery and faith. Because why was Nicodemus coming to Jesus with questions in the first place that unpacked the Trinity almost by happen chance in this conversation. He was coming because he didn't understand and he wanted the answers. He could not just sit in the presence of Jesus and hear these teachings. He wanted to know how it worked specifically. So Jesus engaged in this conversation, but then even after this conversation, Nicodemus says, in form of a question, how can this be? And my goodness, how many times in life have you asked that? How can this be? Why is this the case? What is happening? And those are natural questions, and we should have them. Questions are good. That's how we also grow in our faith. But we have to realize in the gift of asking questions, sometimes the answer back is mystery. And that was Jesus saying in sort of dialoguing back is, you can't understand all of these things. You don't understand all of these things. And then Nicodemus learned to sit with that. And he did. Because who was Nicodemus at the end of the story? He was the one there with Jesus at the end. So Nicodemus, in his own story of doubt, came to faith in being able to sit with mystery and the unknown. So I think that is so much truly the gift of Trinity Sunday for us. Is not only are we seeing the greatness of God and how much we have to learn and grow and explore, but to know that there is a limit to that. And be okay with that. Be content and sit with the Holy Spirit's work in our lives and hearts and living that daily journey of step-by-step -step following Jesus, even if I don't quite understand the journey, the trajectory, or how it works. There's one other part that, that is unbelievably core in Trinity Sunday that I've intentionally not said this word yet throughout, but it's, it's one we hear often, um, and, and it's the core of our faith, and that's love. So I said at the beginning... Um, the best metaphor or analogy, perhaps, if we're going to have to try to pick one to understand the Trinity, is St. Augustine, early church father, can never go wrong, quoting St. Augustine, and how he described the Trinity was all about love. He said, God is the lover, the Son is the beloved, and the Holy Spirit is the love that exists between them. And another early church father, a few centuries after St. Augustine, unpacked it another way, which is similar, of saying, you could think of the Trinity as a dance. 
But in this case, God, the members of the Trinity aren't the dancer, they are the dance. And the music that is present is the love that exists. And I know this is a, a, a sort of poetic way to understand. It's not as specific of saying, here's an A, this is what the Trinity's like. But what it does do is it connects with what I think we've all experienced in this life. And I pray that you have, if you have felt and known good love in your life, the presence of someone else, a mother, a spouse, a friend who has loved you in your ups and downs, my friends, that is the Trinity. That is the Trinity in our universe that created this, that is in this ever-changing dance, circular dance, where no part of the Trinity is greater than the other. They work in mutual support of each other and love and building up the other part of the Trinity. There is no perfect analogy for that because so much of what we see in this world is unfortunately the broken side of what is the purity of love that is born forth from the relationship of the Trinity. So in some sense, what is, you know, jokingly the hardest Sunday to explain or understand, maybe is best narrowed down to just a few things. There are things we can't understand, and that's mystery, and that is faith. And faith is the essence of things where you can grow, as it's talked about in the book of Hebrews. And then the other part of that is love. Because of the Trinity, we have love, we know love, our creation is built in the foundation of love. And if we can tap into that as a world, my goodness, would it look different. But maybe for us today, for us sitting in the pew here, what does it look like for us to reflect on the goodness of true love, of mutual co-equal respect and love found and built in the dance of the Trinity? That really is profound. And then our, our readings for today, our last um, verse or second to last verse of our gospel, one you know well. But it frames up today, Trinity Sunday. For God so loved the world that he gave his only beloved Son, that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Stand as you are able, and we'll be on page 358 in our Book of Common Prayer. And um, I apologize for the interruption or liberty to say this, but if you notice as you go through our creed, how is it structured? It's following the structure of the Trinity Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <coughs> we believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen.
for the church and for the world. Remembering especially Trinity Church, Spruce Pines, and Trinity Asheville. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for your earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remembering all those on our parish prayer list, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I'm going to take this opportunity to say a prayer in remembrance of tomorrow being Memorial Day. <coughs> oh God of the nations. We remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in a day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. This we ask through the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Lord, accept these prayers as we learn to live and follow you on this Trinity Sunday. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. In love, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we are never again. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able to. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. You have a beautiful voice. Oh, thank you. Well, peace be yes. with you all. It's a joy to have you with us. You're welcome to take a seat when you made your rounds and said your peace. <laughs>
Well, happy weekend again. It's a joy to be here. If you're visiting today, you're most welcome. Please let us know if there's any way we can help you plug in, if you have any questions at the end. But know you're very welcome here. And a little taste of the story of our church that I learned today and should have known better is that when Kathy and I were making, finishing the bulletin, she said, hey, I don't think anyone signed up on the board for coffee hour. And I said, no worries. Uh, and Kathy said, well, that's up in the freezer. And there was a cake in there. It was perfect, delicious, pulled that out. And I said, yeah, I'll just get some veggies on the way home, uh, veggie platter on the way to Ingalls, and, and did that. And I thought, well, then they'll really know what happens if your rector's up for coffee hour, and then sign-ups won't be a problem. <laughs> so I get there thinking, well, at least we'll have this, this lovely cake and then a veggie platter. I get in there, and of course, in true Transfiguration style, is overflowing with food when people realize there wasn't a sign up and it's a delicious, perfect coffee hour over there. So um, I should have, speaking of faith, should have just known there's never a need to buy a magic platter this church will deliver. So uh, next door after service is a lovely coffee hour. Please stay and um, get to know us and, and enjoy uh, this beautiful weekend. Uh, are there any anniversaries or birthdays in the room? To, to, uh, Say prayers over. I see Patrick has a birthday coming up this week. Well, loving God for whoever in our community and our parish has a birthday or anniversary this week, be present with them. Let them feel your love and know the feeling of home and community through this parish. Amen. 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 Some announcements for this week. Uh, next week, June 2nd, is um, the start of our summer series for adult formation, which meets between services. So if you come today, those folks can stay longer, or you can come a little early. We'll start around 9, 10, um, over in Sailor House, and it's the Uncommon Book of Common Prayer, meaning it's uncommonly an amazing gift for us. And you saw just a little uh, sort of humorous taste of that today, looking at the catechism, but we're going to go through... Uh, the Book of Common Prayer and see what theology is there. Why was he created the way it was? What do these words mean? What is right to? What is right one? Why do we have both? Whatever questions you might have had, because the truth is, we only use a very few specific pages regularly. If you looked at the size of this book, which is truly one of the greatest gifts of our tradition and domination, not just to those within it, but truly to the world, as being one of the most sold um, used and profound works of literature and influence. Um, next to the Bible, out of what came back in the 1500s out of England. So um, we'll talk about it and explore it together. Um, you're most welcome. I know there's other things I'll think of, but while I'm thinking of them, are there other announcements from the congregation? Come on in, guys. I think this might be a first. Or an announcement Venda. I knew it. You wouldn't let me down. I just want to say that my beautiful granddaughter Gracie will be having a baby this week and we are over the moon excited. So uh, just say prayers and blessings. Yeah, what a gift. She will, she will be with you from today till next Saturday. And I I'm so sorry. I I don't like called out when I'm visiting a church, but just have to say our youngest member with us today, Dawson, da Dawson James, grandson of Debbie D, is in the back with us today. You all are most welcome. <laughs> Expand our age range. Well, if there's nothing else, friends, ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
Our service of Holy Eucharist begins on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We are to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you, your co-equal Son and Holy Spirit, are one God, one Lord, one Trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name.
Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us be peace. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God to the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Christians in the, in the early church. And I just think of it today as we are worshiping along the saints of God in the presence of the past of those who have come before us, worshiping the Holy Trinity on this beautiful Sunday morning. Let us now say our words of prayer together on page 356. Let us pray. The eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the blessing of God Almighty, who it is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be on you this day, remain with you evermore. Amen. Amen.